somewhere before? Was it in the pits at Branzac, changing four tyres in seven hours? Or was it in an art gallery on a painting, still life of geezer with screwdriver? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good impersonation of Del, but that is Jake. Even that of the withering sarcasm. <laughs> <I like that. laughs> Any more remarks like that, Winston, and this'll be a golden handshake, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, Winston, it is me. Why isn't my car ready? Sorry, Del, but... But you can't have a car phone without building a connection to the battery. I need the car to go to the station tonight. Don't hassle the kid, Delbert. You can always get to the Radio Shack by public transport. Public transport is a sore point with me at the moment, Uncle Jake. Several sore points, in fact. I've had nothing but aggravation today. My ribs have been crushed, my feet are like a pair of spam fritters, and I daren't tell you about the bits in between. <laughs> Luckily, my totally spondicious brand new jacket will cover a multitude of things. You should have saved yourself the trip. I'd have made you a big jacket. Just converted an overcoat. <laughs> well, thanks, Uncle Jack, but sorry. This is a modeling assignment, you know what I mean? This is a prototype. The jacket is so up-to-date, the geezer's still working on it inside the box. <laughs> Hopefully, a lot faster than my mechanic. Right, that's the brackets fixed. Jake, do you want to give me a hand with the car phone? Yeah. Why does it need two of you to fetch the car phone? I oh, know, of course. One of you to carry it, the other one to find a way back. <laughs> Winston, you're driving me mad. I ordered a state-of-the-art, lightweight, cell neck trim phone in Alpine White. How'd you get hold of this by vandalising the TARDIS? This is better though, Delbert. It don't cost nothing to run, and it works like a piggy bank. You could have got me a push button one. <laughs> there you go, Delbert. That's a uh, roast lamb without gravy. Do you want some mint sauce? Mint jelly, Julie. I don't want the slightest risk of this jacket getting splashed, you know what I mean? And you better declare a two table exclusion zone all around me and put another napkin on my back just in case some messy eaters come in. <laughs> Roy Hattersley or something. <laughs> well, he had his fair share of napkins, Julie. If he wants any more, make him pay for them. What's that then, Alex? A cover charge? <laughs> <laughs> He's only penny pinching because he had to pay one of his meat supplies today. Murderers. Yeah. It must be tough being a vegetarian in a kebab house. Don't tell anyone, Julie, but I used to have a Saturday job in the Army and Navy store, selling Dr. Martins to psychotic white skinheads. I mean, me, a black pacifist apprentice style counselor. Could you stand it? I couldn't, so I used to think, why not put razor blades in their toe caps so that if they kick anybody, they cut their feet off? <laughs> well, that's a good idea. I think I'll try that with the kebabs. Julie, I never actually did it. I just thought about it a lot, you know what I mean? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is you can work in hostile surroundings and still preserve your integrity. I mean, it's just words. Don't think of them as animals, frolicking around in the fields, hanging out with their woolly brothers, gamboling around innocently, bleating. You got any salad? <laughs> Another convert. Well done, Del, but besides, you're better off not eating red meat. This is black anyway. <laughs> Here you go, Alex. Thanks, Dee. I use these again. <laughs> Can I uh, get you something else, like a lamb sandwich? Alex, what is it with the sheep, man? I mean, did he just run over a flock of them in the high street or something? <laughs> An assignment of lamb just happened to come my way at a competitive price. You ought to have CFAC subtitles, guy. What that means is they fell off the back of a lorry, am I right? <laughs> back of a train, actually. A couple of my uh, customers managed to get on board a goods wagon while it was stopped in the station last night. They were after mailbags. Still, it's an ill wind. 
Look, Alex, I'm about to go in there and do some potentially award-winning radio commercials, right? So? So, we've only just seen off one police raid guy. What's it going to look like to my advertisers if I'm associated with someone who's done for rustling? <laughs> I mean, I'm supposed to be legal, decent, honest and wicked. All right, all right. So the more lamb you eat, the quicker I'll get rid of it. Oh, Delbert, I'm disappointed in you. I thought you were going to join the cause. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Julie, but you know what they say. You are what you eat. And according to this, I'm a big stiffardo. <laughs> ये गाना लाभ की साथियों ने गाया जिसकी फरमाइश दक्षा और जयश्री जो ये प्रोग्राम हर रात बड़े शौक से सुनते हैं अच्छा दिलबत विल्किन जाने वाला है जो अपना तुर्की स्पंदिश शो पेश करेंगे एंड आई जस्ट लाइक टू लीव ऑल ऑफ यू आउट देयर विथ दिस थॉट द ओनली प्लेस सक्सेस कम्स बिफोर वर्क इज इन द डिक्शनरी यू कैन लिसन टू वा 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 Team on the Brixton Broadcasting Corporation. It's 10 seconds to the big one. The Delbert Wilkins Show. Who's that geezer over there? Is it Philip Michael Thomas from Miami Vice? Nah, it's Prince Shirley. <laughs> Natural mistakes to make, guys. Actually, it's me, Delbert Wilkins, and I've just been shopping at the Cool Box. Yeah, that's right, the Cool Box on the Kings Road, where the clothes make you into a star. Go there right away and get a single ticket when you go. Why is that, Delbert? <laughs> Because it'd be so cool when you come out, the river will freeze beneath you, and you'll be able to walk home. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wilkins. All right, that was just a few words from my sponsors, and now here's a few words from me. When is something going to be done about trains? Yeah, that's right, trains. Because I was travelling on one this afternoon when I went up west, me and about four million other people, and that was just in my seat. You know what I mean? <laughs> See, I don't normally go on the underground because I've got to remain visible. You know what I mean? It's part of my modelling contract with God. <laughs> See, I don't like the tube, right? Because of all the assaults. I'm not talking about muggers. I'm talking about the assaults on my ears. It's all them buskers, guy. I can't wear my warmer without getting interference from the fiend from the deer hunter. More people have been tortured by that than there were during the Vietnam War. Anyway, I was looking out my window, and all I could see was these miles and miles of empty track. I thought, come on, British Rail, why not fill up all this empty space and give us a little train each? Yeah, that's right. Personalised, custom-built trains for all. That's the way to keep death off the roads. <laughs> This has been a Delbert Wilkins public announcement, and now some light music. Taxi, taxi, did they gonna mend that? You jogging, did they gonna mend that? Wrap it up, yes. Evening, gents. Uh, what can I get you? Don't try to be clever with me, Tommy. Sergeant Lily, isn't it? Hey, Julie, look who's here. It's the officer who thought we got fire at radio in the back room. Why? Do you still get those hallucinations? It was an honest mistake, sir. We're um investigating the theft of some meat at the station. Well, you really ought to be more careful who you let into your canteen. Not our station, cowboy. <laughs> the railway station. Don't look at me. I was here all night. So was I. Very convenient. Why was laughing, boy? I think Sergeant Lily means Mr. Wilkins. Oh, he was here and all. No, he wasn't. Something smells in here, Moncast. It's not just the kitchen. <laughs> Thank you, bud. To eat. Aren't we on duty, Sergeant? Correct, Monkhouse. But as we're looking for stolen meat, it's quite in order for us to stake out the joint. Very droll, sir. What? <laughs> uh, would you like to accompany me to the table? Sorry to interrupt the show, listeners, but unfortunately we got a local disturbance, which means the Brixton Broadcasting Corporation has to come off the air for a bit. So this is Delbert Wilkins, the big super duper, saying to his posse, "Stay tuned, but more importantly, stay crucial." You know what I mean? <laughs> this is very acceptable. What is it? It's roast, uh, something or other. I wouldn't know. I'm a vegetarian. Don't you want anything at all, love? No thanks, really. Don't want to overload the patrol car. <laughs> You're gonna have to loosen up if you want to stay my partner, Monkhouse. The way to solve crime in this neighbourhood is by keeping your ear to the ground and your face to the plate, Sarge. <laughs> seen anything suspicious so far? No, Sergeant. That is, I'm not sure. <clears throat> That cellar doesn't need a clean out, Alex. It needs an exorcism. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I can't begin to guess what's caused the blue alert. Okay, okay. So you told me. 
Well, if he does bust me, I can always get him for receiving stolen goods as well. Right? What are you doing behind there, Wilkins? Surely not a job of work. Alex needed a hand with your pudding, you know, just stirring the bucket of custard. <laughs> I'm here on an official investigation. Come and help me with my inquiries. All right, but one of these days I won't be around to help. You'll have to solve all these crimes on your own, you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> just have the last word, doesn't he? It's all yours, Constable. Good evening, sir. Just making you feel at home, PC Monkhouse. <laughs> All right, I'm a sausage. Grill me. <laughs> Come on, guys, yuck it up. This is good stuff, you know what I mean? Would you mind telling us if you were in the vicinity of the station this time last night? What station? For a minute there, I think he thought you meant radio station. <laughs> Carry on, Monkhouse. You're doing well. No, sir. I was referring to the railway station. Nah, man, you're seriously wider than Robert Mark there, Constable. You use public transport. You'd know that if you listen to my... my friends. <laughs> so what did I miss? Well, someone carried out a raid on a goods train from the north of England last night and stole 24 carcasses of lamb from a refrigerated container. Mm, now, who could have done that? The deep frozen wing of the Animal Liberation Front? <laughs> considered the possibility that it could be an inside job, you know, a sheep with a grudge. <laughs> crime is still a crime, sir. Now, you're not being very helpful. OK, check this out, right? I reckon it was someone acting on a tip-off. Really? Well, who from? The police. <laughs> See, you guys are always using trains to raid us, so I bet someone thought they'd get their own back. Poetic justice. See, he's not saying nothing. He knows I'm right. I'm saying nothing because I feel sick. <laughs> Just cos he couldn't fit me up. I think Sergeant Lily must have eaten something that disagreed with him. Oh, yeah? What did he have? Let me shake hands with it. <laughs> he had lamb. Quite <laughs> oh, right, Julie. You go to college, don't you? Where do you think I should put this? <laughs> the top of the house, by the look of it. No, that's where I got it from. It's a car phone system. I've got to line this up so it can bounce off a signal to a communication satellite orbiting 50 miles above the Earth. Talking to heavenly bodies, how's Delbert? Well, he's not up at the moment. That's why I'm rushing to finish this. You don't think he's ill, do you? Well, the last time I spoke to him, he was ill-mannered. <laughs> now he's going to be ill-tempered. It's the baby final, or whoever it is. Hiya, it's Julie, and it could be a matter of life or death. Oh, well, in that case, just give me an hour to put some clothes on. And tell Winston that that satellite's due up already in 7 minutes and 23 seconds. I'd better get my area locked onto it now. His master's voice box. I heard that, Winston. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, Julie, Julie. <laughs> Julie, Julie, Julie. <laughs> you know what I mean? How did you do that? Digital audio, darling. It's all in the fingers, you know. <laughs> now then, breakfast, juice. I've got freshly squeezed orange or freshly squashed tomato. I like the breakfast in style, you know what I mean? Well, hadn't you better take that daft shower cap off first? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> That's just to stop the exotic oils and spices that I use in my hair from causing a giant oil slick on my pillow in the night, you know what I mean? <laughs> Still, it could have been more embarrassing. I've got one that covers my... moustache. <laughs> look after yourself, don't you? That's right, my body is a temple, and I like to worship seven days a week, not just Sundays. <laughs> Has anything happened to the temple since I passed the plate round last night? Julie, my private life is a secret between me and Whitney Houston, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I meant if you felt ill or anything after eating Alex's roast lamb. No, why? Well, I'm just a bit worried about what made that copper feel sick. Oh, come on, Julie, you know Sergeant Lily. He gets through about 15 meals a day. If he got food poisoning, there'd be a lot of suspects, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, even if the lamb was off, it wouldn't affect me. I could eat nuclear waste and still look crucial. Go oh, on, then. Have a look, see if you notice any difference. Why, Julie? What's the matter? What are you talking about? Look, that lamb, it was nicked from a train, right? Every night a train carrying nuclear waste goes through Brixton, so what if it's the same train? What, you mean they got a buffet car on it? <laughs> Lots of sheep were affected by fallout when that cloud from Chernobyl passed over the north of England. Look, Julie, I'm dubious about nuclear power too, right? I don't want to be microwaved by it, especially at a thousand degrees centigrade. My hair will be like a bunch of crispy spring rolls, you know what I mean? <laughs> we just have to live with it and hope that mankind has the technology to control it. 
Like that, see? I'm sorry, but womankind thinks you're talking through your shower cap. Here's another example of the total control we enjoy. Delbert Wilkins. Hi, would you accept a collect car from the NASA Space Center, Florida? What? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. It's probably about my application to go on the space shuttle. <laughs> Delbert Wilkins. Sorry, Delbert, I didn't have a ten pence piece for the phone. Winston, where are you? Outside your flat. But your voice is coming from America! That's good. It's really amazing what science can do, isn't it? It isn't good, Winston, because I'm paying for it now. Hang up before you bank up me, you nick your poop. There's no need to shout, Delbert. I can hear you through the window. <laughs> Last night, I had to interrupt my show to crawl through the cellar. Tonight, I'm risking electroshock therapy. Julie, I'm trying to win the Sony Radio Awards, not the flipping Krypton Factor. It's funny, Del, but the noise comes through around about this time. Oh, look. You see, extra security. It's got to be a hush-hush operation. Yeah, you're probably right. They're really the South London Police Morris dancing team about to embark on a secret practice. <laughs> Who was that? Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> and you say this happens around the same time every night? Uh-huh. Regular as nuclear-powered clockwork. Well, it's when I'm on the air. The whole world is listening to my show, man. I don't believe it. These spooks are exploiting my popularity to deceive the general public about what's really going on. It's the Krypton Factor. <laughs> I'm not feeling too well, either. Yeah, I shouldn't have served you that lamb. Can I get you anything? Yeah. A Geiger counter. <laughs> there you are. One National Health Service Geiger counter. Oh, thanks, Mum. Never mind the thanks, Mum. What about your side of the bargain? An explanation. A plausible one. OK. I'm organising a car boot sale of nuclear warheads, and I just wanted to test them for reliability. <laughs> You know, the more you say, the less I understand. Mm, well, give me this thing and I'll show you exactly what I mean. One, one. My mic sounds nice, Jen. <laughs> I am clean! All those misspent Thursday nights, hmm? Switching on top of the pops and switching off tomorrow's world. It would help if you turn it on. <laughs> I'm supposed to be crucial, not critical. You haven't been smoking Jake's pipe, have you, Delbert? No, <laughs> It must have been something I ate. My last supper. All right. Where do you think you picked up this deadly dose from? From a piece of contaminated roast lamb. You'll be laughing on the other side of your apron when I'm sharing a funeral with Sergeant Lily. Sergeant Lily? He was admitted yesterday. Only food poisoning. That's what they want you to think. Where is he? What I wouldn't give for a bag of quick drying cement and a funnel. <laughs> what over now? We've got to start serving breakfast. <laughs> I've got more Geigers than you, guy. And he's laid up in a bed.
How's your eye? Uncle Jake, I know this may sound a bit weird, but you haven't seen a bunch of geezers in white suits wandering around in slow motion, have you? Not since I saw The Temptations in 1965. <laughs> They're not likely to be back in town, are they? <laughs> What's popping there, though? Well, apart from my insides, maybe the whole of Brixton. Hey, pull up a seat. A sweet tailor said. <laughs> Uncle Jake, I've got the power of communication, right? But what about if I have to tell my fans something they don't want to hear? I mean, the most important message I've delivered so far this year is that stripes are in and spots are out. And that's only in socks. What about if I have to tell them something that makes them rush out into the streets in panic? There ain't nothing to fear from the truth. Either from those who hear it or those who tell it. Oh, yeah? What about those who get stampeded by it? Listen. If a lion jumps ten guys and they all begin to run, he's going to catch one of them. And nine guys are going to get lucky. But if you tell those guys that they aren't the guys who get lucky, that they're the guys who's going to get eaten, then the guys stand their ground. So, the lion now knows he's going to have to fight nine guys before he can get to the one he wants to eat. Well then, that lion's going to think twice. <laughs> Well, he would, wouldn't he? <laughs> but what about if the authorities won't admit there's a lion out there? They will, when it bites their backsides. An important backside, not just ours. You mean a uniform backside? <laughs> what would I know? My socks is out. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not expecting me to work here tonight, poisoning people for £2.50 an hour plus tips. OK, you win. Never let it be said that Alex Kazoblis doesn't listen to his employees. £3 an hour, less tips. It's not the money, it's the principle. Well, fair enough. Back to £2.50, then. Look, can you do an extra hour now? I'm expecting a big crowd in for the lamb hot pot. Hot is right, Alex. I've just run my Gaga counter over your freezer. It's crackling like a festival of scratch DJs. <laughs> if you don't throw this lamb out now, the entire freezer's gonna melt through the Earth's crust and end up in Cyprus. Probably somewhere near Limassol. <laughs> you know, you don't know where those animals have been. They've probably been grazing in the shadow of Sellafield, the mutant sprouting six legs. Six legs, eh? That sounds like value for money. <laughs> what did you say this field was? Don't worry, Julie. If he can expose me to radiation, I can expose him on the radio. <laughs> if you do that, my friend, it'll be the last broadcast you make from here. If I go down, the station goes down with me. You can't bite the hand that feeds you, Delbert. I wouldn't want to if it was contaminated. <laughs> it's not good, Delbert. You're going to have to appeal to his better nature. Go on, offer him some money. Yeah. How much do you want for the dodgy meat guy? Give me what I paid, in cash, and you can do what you want with it. That's fair enough. How much do you want? 350. How much? <laughs> I thought we were talking bar bars, not gold bars. <laughs> anyway, you're out of luck. I've only got plastic. You mean rubber? Even his credit bounces. 350 in readies gets you the meat, OK? Right. Better go and see how my lamb a la Grec's doing. Don't know what he's getting so upset about. It wasn't even my name on the credit card, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to think of something else. No, perhaps there's a reward on offer. Yeah. I'll check it out with my new friend, PC Mankas. I'll call him on his direct line. Do you know his number? Of course I do. 999. <laughs> I hope I don't want to be saying this, PC Mankas, but you look seriously off duty, you know what I mean? You've got to try and blend in with Brixton. Plain clothes, right? <laughs> I'll bear it in mind, sir. But I didn't ask you here to give you tips in taste. You have to pay for those, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I believe you might have some information for me? Yes, as in information pertaining to the recovery of certain items. <laughs> this is my off-the-record notebook. <laughs> now, could you um, give me a clue as to what these items might be? <clears throat> Sounds like <laughs> sleep. Ah, all right. I think we understand each other. Now then, if you can get them back to their original owners while Sergeant Lily's lying in his hospital bed, that'd be a big feather in your peak cap. Am I right? Where are they? I mean, we're always keen to improve our clear-up rate, sir. All right. Now then, community policing is a two-way street, which brings us on to the question of the reward. 
Well, I'm sure the insurance company will be happy to pay the usual 10% of the value Fast of the goods. Fast forward to the actual amount, guy. <laughs> 350 pounds. Sorry to interrupt the song, listeners, but I'm afraid I've got to tell you about a real train that's coming your way. Forget all that stuff I said about keeping deaf off the roads, because they're trying to pick it back to the rails. Round right about this time every night, a ship of death carrying a deadly cargo of isotopes, nuclear submarines and three-headed sheep charges to our beloved neighbourhood. <laughs> what can we do about it? We can tell them no. We don't want nuclear waste trailed through our back gardens making our potatoes into silicon chips. <laughs> we don't want it turning out rhubarb and making it sprout 500 feet and attacking low-flying aircraft. <laughs> we don't want it, so tell them no. No way to nuclear waste. This has been a special edition of Wilkins Watch, compiled with the help of Sergeant Lily, a very brave policeman who even now is lying in a hospital bed, glowing like one of them kids from a Ready Brett commercial. <laughs> Sergeant Lily, this one's for you. It's probably the press pestering me with their queries about all kinds of business. Delbert Wilkins, 26, unattached. <laughs> Hello? Who is this? Sorry, Delbert. I got some protective clothing from the gardening centre. Yeah, and I've delivered the meat to where you said. No, no, there's no sign of any police yet. But they'll soon get the message. Listen. I've got just one minute to give you the next instalment in the Delbert Wilkins Guide to Cruciality. Now, Andy Warhol once said that everybody can be famous for 15 minutes. Of course, his watch must have been broken when he was timing me, because I'm going to be famous forever, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, I'm just about to go into this international press conference about how I saved Brixton from becoming a giant ashtray, which is no big deal, but the eyes of the world are upon me. So it's totally important that you look wicked. Otherwise, it'll be like when that Michael Foote lost the general election because he was wearing a donkey jacket. You know, and Neil Kinnock was wearing a Mark Spencer suit and he lost the next one. So it makes political sense to wear a crucial jacket like this. Also, remember, what you say is just as important as how you look. For instance, if you mention your favourite sweets in interviews, the public will send you thousands. And also... I like jelly babies. I'm going to try and squeeze that bit of information on at the end, Winston. When they ask what my chauffeur's qualifications are, I'll say he likes jelly babies. Cheers, Delbert. <laughs> you can put your actors anyway, Winston. I think we're going to get a police escort. Thanks for your help with that uh, stolen property, sir, but I think you ought to know that forensics say it isn't at all radioactive. In fact, the meat was stolen from an ordinary goods train. Still, who cares as long as it stops those Sellafield specials coming through our patch? Keep up the good work, sir. Not radioactive? Well, I don't believe it. Something must be radioactive. Let's have a look at that a second. See? Yeah, but it's not you that's radioactive, Delbert. So what? You think this is a Geiger counter with a sense of humour? What else <laughs> did you get from Chernobyl Lab? Whoa! <laughs> Cruciality with a capital C, even a big bad wolf wouldn't mess with me, and I'm original. My style is unique, and I'm rocking this mic at days a week. I'm a secret quest to free you from doom. My technical kind of suit lights up this room. Don't be so sad. Like a tiger should be in a cage I'm wanted for my impeccable taste Seven changes of clothes Just in case 